Welcome. You're listening to a special episode released from one of the podcasters and experts as part of Finance Podcast Week. Join us March 26th through 28th for live stream panels and exclusive episodes from some of your favorite finance podcasters from around the world. Finance Podcast Week is brought to you by Podbean and brings you expertise and insight on podcast topics ranging from personal finance, budgeting, and real estate to cryptocurrency, investing for millennials, and more. To get the full schedule and join the live streams in real time through the Podbean app, register now at podcastweek.live slash finance. That's podcastweek.live slash finance. Please remember to always consult a financial advisor before making decisions about your finances. And now, enjoy the episode from our esteemed presenter. Welcome to the Broke to Woke podcast. Our mission for this podcast is to help each and every person out there in the world not only become a force for good, but also uncover those micro, magical, mental moments that help you become an absolute cerebral pyromaniac. And we are back. John Guidens over here, a mental musketeer, <laughs> a cerebral pyromaniac. All right, your friend, MIT, says, hey, man, I built it. <laughs> it's ready to go. What are you going to do? Yeah, so uh, shout out to Tim and Tope. So a friend of mine, good friend of mine, childhood friend, he, he ended up going to MIT. And so we talked about this concept, and I dreamed something up. I'm not, it's not new. Come up with an idea. We've come up with ideas before. He said, oh, this is a good idea. And I said, man, you think you can build it? So sure. I said, Okay. He says, but if I build it, can you sell it? I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He said, all right. <clears throat> and uh, a little while later, maybe a few weeks, okay, came by, maybe a month or so came by, and he. Boom, there it is. He hit me up. He said, uh, it's real. I built it. I was like, you built it? Like it's built? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, you ready? I said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, it's time. And how old are you again at this point? Twenty. Two. Okay. 21. Got it. So are you still 22. working for the insurance company? Yes. Okay. Got it. This was this was the exit. Yep. This is about to say, this is the exit play. This was the exit. Okay. That's right. Let's dive into it, man. Yeah. So uh, it's a company called Duffled. Okay. Commercial text message platform. We had a short code, 39970. We work with auto, uh, restaurants, auto service centers, church youth groups, and it was a machine learning, uh, a, a human computer interaction software. It's one of the first to be built. One of the first sixteen short codes that were built on. And when people, it was new when people didn't even know what short codes were. I mean, it was early, early days. But how did you come up with that idea? My insurance days, I was calling on these companies, and when I called on the auto service companies, they they were archaic in how they would remind me about oil changes with the sticker. I'm like, is there a better way to communicate with me? Interesting. And I'm, I've always been a fan of technology. Okay. So I was a big fan of the optical character recognition when it first came out or the text to speech stuff. So I don't know if you remember dragon naturally speaking. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was like the Piter. I, I bought the, all the crummy versions, like the first versions that didn't work very well. Wow. Every 15th word they get right. Mm-hmm. I bought all of those. <laughs> I was in on all of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So technology was always something that I was okay. passionate about. Okay. And so ideas, I have no shortage of ideas. Yeah. I talk to somebody for five minutes. They tell me what they want to do. I give them an idea. So I'm going to pause on that for a moment. That is a true story. If you're listening and or watching. <laughs> My man over here, JG, is an idea machine. But credit to you, they're not just generically okay ideas. They're pretty big picture, relatively well thought out, large stretch goal ideas that scare people. I've seen you do it numerous times. It's a gift. Man. Thank you. It is a real gift. And Thank uh, you. Anyway, so you have this idea. Yeah. It's flowing. You tell them, hey, we need to remind people, short codes. All right. Yeah, I pitched it. So I pitched it to him and... Pitched it to Tim and Tope, and he said he'll build it and all. And then so here, now we have this thing built. I had to figure out how to be an entrepreneur for real. Yeah. It was, it was, so I'm, I'm sitting here going, how do you do this? <laughs> I've got no money. I've got really no money saved up, not a ton of money at least. 
And so we're going to blow through that real quick. He's not cheap to keep alive, keep alive either. MIT guy recruited by a bunch of folks. So we're convincing two people that are pretty good earners to quit their jobs and, and start this thing. Sure. So I had to go raise some money. No clue what I was doing. No clue what I was doing, but I was like, this is a thing. <laughs> so I looked it up. I looked up some presentations. How'd you I look it up? One. Just literally just started researching what, what people do, how to pitch it. Google or Bing? I don't know if it was Google or this was in 2006, 2007. Sure. So I don't know what. I mean, it wasn't libraries or, but it was No, no, okay. I didn't go to the, no, it wasn't okay. the library. Yeah, it was yeah, the internet yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was the internet still. <laughs> so just researching kind of what that is. Okay. And, and that's, okay, let's make a presentation. So I started sure. making a presentation, PowerPoint. Okay. Put it together, duffled. How do you find out the investors? Uh, this is my personal network. So one guy that I sold insurance with, I told him about what I was doing and I was leaving. And Fellow I said, employer? Employee. Employee. Got it. Coworker. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Coworker's uncle. Okay. A coworker's uncle, somebody I met through football, was like a scholarship donor's friend and some other guy that was a mentor to a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And so just a random collection of people. Yep. Yeah. And right here, my friends, this is the broke to woke, right? Part of it where John's going through all this and he's trying to piece this together and he's realizing at this moment, both consciously and unconsciously and subconsciously, your net work equals your net worth and so he's going out reaching out talking and trying to raise some money for this thing well let me stop let me just psa on that (laughs) that could not that could not be more true it's it's crazy how true that is yeah the people in your life the people that you know people that you that 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 trust you that that know like and trust you that makes life Mm -hmm. so much easier in fact when i speak to young people I give them a strategy on creating an army of advocates while they're in school to set them set themselves up for massive success. And the students that have done it have had sent me, tracked me down to send me a note to say how it's changed their lives. I love that. Literally saying, hey, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the people in your life know your story. So by the time you graduate, they're dying to help you. <sighs> and it's it because... Everybody yes. else has everybody Three else has bumps. good grades. They got good grades. They've been doing this. They've been doing that. What's going to separate you yeah. as a student, yeah. you as a person in college, from everybody else? It's your network. So I give them a strategy. I'm going to give everybody, if you're watching this, young people, you're watching this, pay attention. Here's what we're going to do. Say you're in college. Perfect time to do this because – or you're in school or you're young. Perfect time because – we love to help young people, don't we? Yeah, and they we come yeah. to us. So I gave yeah, them a script. Yeah. I said, you reach out. Say you want to be a doctor. You want to be an engineer. You want to be in this. It doesn't matter the arena. Pick the arena. Figure out all the big players. Then start reaching out to them and say, I'm a student here. I'm just learning. I want to pick your brain. I was wondering if we could meet for coffee or something like that. They'll say yes. Once they say yes, then you meet with them. You talk with them. Ask them some questions, that type of thing. Mm. And then here's the hook. You say, hey, you mind if I hold on to your email and, and drop you a note from time to time letting you know about my progress? And just in case I have some questions down the road. And they say, sure. And so what you're doing is you're building this army of advocates. And so they see you here. Well, you start sending them monthly or quarterly updates, depending on if you're graduating next year or yep. in three years. Yep. And you're sending them these updates. They may never even respond to the update unless you put a significant question in there, but they're going to read them. And so what happens when they read them is they're getting this picture in their mind of here's a person that started here and we have lines, not dots. Mm-hmm. People do dots all the time. Bam, 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 bam. No lines. Started here, moved here, moved here, moved here, moved yep. here. By the time you graduate and you say, hey, I'm looking to start a company. I'm looking for investors or, hey, I'm looking for a job over at, over at KPMG. And they're going to say, I know somebody there. They I'm going to make an introduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to say, I've known them for years. Great kid. Real smart. Boom. Works all the time. Love it. So that's what you're doing. Yes. This journey. We mentioned a PowerPoint, a pitch deck. Yes. As it might be called. Yes. Are you building that yourself? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> doing a yeah. miserable job at it. <laughs> yeah. Built it myself. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was, I'll tell you. It was really a lot of me and my excitement and me just, this is what it is, made my own business plan. Mm-hmm. Again, learning, mm-hmm. 
way too big of a business plan. It was like 30 pages mm. with every detail oh. I thought you could possibly want. Back then, I didn't oh. understand. I didn't understand the art of imperfection and owning it and owning not knowing. Didn't understand that at all. Wow. You ask me, I'm like, as you can see by this Excel spreadsheet, month nine, we're going to be freaking rich. Mm. You know, <laughs> I just took the formula and slide it up into the right. Mm. And boom. It's looking great. There it is. So no, <laughs> you know, just totally epic. Yeah. Love it. Now, what the heck is the name Duffled? What does that mean? <laughs> I, I know there's a story or something there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. So we were basically just saying, this is going to be a huge success. And we're talking about it. And I was like, it's in the bag. And then we're like, duffled like a duffel bag <laughs> and we're like, we're like duffled and then we like turn that into a verb you know like <clears throat> so we just uh, said what is name a duffled and also it's a search to see what's available or whatever and i was like duffled it's wide open what will sure. you do with it that was the tagline oh. duffled what will you do with it so we made this feature rich thing cool that cool. could text your customer on their birthday automatically with first you know That's one sick. of the first ones to come up with that i was about like, to say that was yeah, early in yeah, the game oh yeah man. We collected information before it was a thing. Get I mean, we it. built we built a bot that was, you know, it was machine to human interaction. Yeah. So they'd say, in fact, there's still people today, today still, still running this technology today. We built it in 07, 13 years, still running. People will text me still and say, thank you for reaching out to me on my birthday. Because I, I, I had about 90 people. I said, I was doing a demo account. And I have 90 people in this demo account. And they all put their birthdays in. Got it. And that count is still live. Amazing. And it was still running. Wow. And it says, Happy birthday from John Guyton. Hope you have a great day. Call me. Let's catch up. And so I'll get a random call from people. Sick. Thanks so much for thinking of me. And I'm like, Hey, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, my pleasure. <laughs> You're awesome. I'm like, Absolutely. You having a good day? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Yeah. You know? Ask them oh, all yeah. the who are you questions. Yeah. yeah How's like, the weather? Yeah, where catch you me are. up since last time we talked. Catch uh, me up on everything. <laughs> All the details, like your name. All the, de- <laughs> <laughs> all the, how's uh, uh Can't do yeah. Anything. I love how's, that. Um, Big fan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you land any investors? Yes, yes, we did. How much was your? Uh, how much was the pitch in? Like initial the initial raise. Initial raise was about three hundred thousand dollars. Get it? Yeah. Okay. How so, many from each person? How many people invested? We had three investors. Okay. We had one main investor that threw a couple hundred grand, and then the other one was split oh, okay. by the other two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. All right. So three main investors. You got 300 k What do you do with it? We spent it uh, keeping ourselves alive. We gave ourselves a salary, and we just got to work. Mm. We got to work. I got businesses signed up. I got you – know, How I much learned, was the subscription? You know, the same sales, sales. Oh gosh, we played with our pricing so many different times. Sure. It ended up being it was it ended up being anywhere from fifty bucks a month to a few thousand dollars a month, depending on the volume. Ah, uh, I see. I see. So depending a little on, volume game. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So we ended up landing LA Tan, which was a huge account. Hooters, the restaurant, huge account. So you're making all these phone calls, you're smi- Saddleback smiling Church. and dialing. <laughs> we had Hooters, Saddleback Church, Auto Service Centers. <laughs> LA tan, all using the same thing because we built it to be. It, you could anybody could use it, anyone yeah. could use it. Yeah. So we had all these accounts, and we got to the point where we had employees and stuff. What? And we had, oh, absolutely. So Love we're this. we're kind of cranking, and yeah. you know, got to a pretty decent run rate, and then uh, then the realness of understanding what it means to scale, what it means to make the right strategic decisions, it started to really, really set in. So. There was a point in the business where without myself and Timotope, the business would have been wildly profitable. We could have kept it, just kept it rolling. So there was a point in the business where the right thing to do was actually fire myself, fire Timotope, have us go earn income elsewhere so that we could free up that capital and have somebody do the job for much less and keep things rolling. We so ended up selling the company. And it was a huge, huge, huge lesson learned. Huge lesson learned. Tell me what the lesson is. Founders get paid last. Uh, yeah. yeah. And what may seem like a good deal on paper, like you've got you've to really understand exactly what you're doing. Because in the end of the day, we practically gave the company away. 
We mm-hmm. really did. Because we were in a position where we, we kind of wanted to move on to new things and had no, not a really good understanding of, of retaining the value. Like I didn't realize at the time that we had built something valuable. It's still running today. Mm-hmm. So, and the value has gone way up. Talk about a stock, right? Like this has gone way up. Text messages got more popular, not less. More applications, not less. All of these things. So a company that is gearing up to go public is the one who acquired it for pennies on the dollar because we were moving on to the next thing and wanting to get into tech stars and wanting to do our thing and start a new company. And we thought, okay, we have to dump this company in order to do that. And so sold it for practically nothing. And How much? 1.6. And so with that, I mean, you're selling it, you're paying employees, paying off debt, paying that's off. That's it. We're, we're getting back to, we're getting back to regular. Yeah. That's, that's all that is. Yeah. Catching back. That's all Paying that back is. your investors. That's it. You get, you, there's nothing there. What'd you promise them? Or like for the investors, like, hey, you're going to get this amount of return? No, or? it was just equity. It's just yeah. equity. We were just along for the ride. Oh, how much did they buy in for? Oh gosh. Uh, we did a, a couple of different rounds. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little comp. I mean, the, the cap table is a little complicated, got but, it, got it, got it. uh, but we did a couple of different rounds and ended up, uh, I think we ended up with, uh, probably selling off 30% of the company or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And our, our cap table, we learned a lot of lessons around cap table too. <laughs> of course you did. When we got, I had to do a, I had to do what's called a recap for the next company because, uh, I learned a very big lesson, you know, after yeah. that. But, yeah. but yeah, we learned that, you know, I, sh- if, so in hindsight, Knowing what I know now, I would have never sold the company. No. I would have licensed it mm-hmm. to that company and lots of other companies and made mm-hmm. 10 times as much money Easily. and still be making money now. Or yeah. somebody would have acquired it at lots and lots and lots more money. Right. But you live and you learn. Hey, man, you live and learn. And like I said, you got to take those leaps. I know a lot of people who haven't sold a company for 1.6. Yeah, we built, yeah. but we built, you know, it's kind of it was good, bittersweet. Like we built something yeah. from nothing. Right. Built it up. Got customers all around the country. You're 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 selling them, and mm-hmm. he's, is he at the point in time hiring people to help build the platform up as well, or is he still fully doing the to? These these he's all he's all tech. Okay, and he facilitates if we need somebody to help with design or help with this or help with that. We had eight uh, full time employees, and then another uh, six or eight contra- six to eight contractors Killer. at a given time. Yeah, and you know it was interesting because uh, thinking back, you know, you learn about. If I knew then what I know now, you know the whole statement. People say that. Sure. If I knew then what I, oh man, there's so many power moves could have done with that. So, and it was a frustrating time for us for sure. And we, it's like, how often do you make something that can be relevant for so long? A piece of technology, technology specifically, other than like Amber Alert, what technology do you know that's been alive for 13 years, mm. 15 years? Usually in five years, it's outdated. Mm hmm. But just kept evolving as one of those yeah. classic mediums of communication. So, yeah. um, so we learned a lot. We learned a lot about that. We, wow. we, you know, it was a big thing. Now I'm sitting here bummed. I'm like, man, that missed money. It was a lesson, a very important lesson, mm-hmm. which helped me make some serious, seriously good moves in the future. Yeah. Well, I'll say, isn't, isn't, <laughs> I love the expensive lessons. Yeah. And the most expensive lesson in life is the one that you don't learn from. Mm-hmm. So you took some concepts from that at an early age. When did you sell it? What age were you? Uh, 12, 7, 12. So that's 26. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about what you did after that because we're going to need to know going forward, I mean, how you started revolutionizing, shifting, shaping, because now you're free on to do on to the next thing. And everyone, all the listeners out there want to know, like, what happens next? <laughs> Let's do it. Thanks so much for listening, for watching the Broke to Woke podcast. I had a blast. And talking to Jeremy Alexander Newsom is an absolute pleasure. So if you ever get a chance to do that, highly recommend that. Big shout out to the GeForce Mastermind at GeForce Mastermind on social media. Get into the conversation. It's about creating a force for good. That's why we're here. That's why we do these things. That's why we take our time to have these conversations. So if you're feeling it, jump into the conversation. Become a part of a mastermind that is aligned with your values. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you for joining us for this special episode as part of Finance Podcast Week. Join us March 26th through 28th for live stream panels and more exclusive episodes. To get the full schedule and join the live streams in real time through the Podbean app. 
Register now at podcastweek.live slash finance. That's podcastweek.live slash finance.